while it's dark. Oh, it is kind of dark. <laughs> Hope that helps. Well, I hope that helps. Hey, y'all, what's up? Welcome back. All right, so if you're watching this in the replay, make sure you give me a thumbs up and make sure you leave a comment. I'm going to try to go back and read all the comments um, when we're done with this live. So I originally wanted to do this live um, at 7, like I said before, but um, I don't know, Google Chrome was doing something with YouTube, so I wasn't able to log in. So now... I'm going to try to log in so I don't miss any of the comments. Um, yeah, let me go in here. Oh, Lord. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure um, how this is going to work with YouTube right now because um, it was not a scheduled live on YouTube. It was more like me telling y'all I was going to go live. So I'm going to, um, you know, for some reason, the last time I went live, I couldn't see comments. So I'm going to log in here because I don't even see the comment. I just, okay, I just put a comment in. I was trying to see if I could see my own comment and it just popped up. Um, hi, Miss Patricia. So I guess I don't have to type my messages in here. So I just wanted us to be able to chit chat tonight. I know we had talked about um, saying no early on in the week. And um, just to encourage others to, if they haven't started, to start their uh, their, surf, their self-care journey. Hi, Miss Tanya. Hi, Miss Lynn. Shorty, shorty do wild. <laughs> That's cute. Um, yeah. And I just want to say, I guess one thing before I forget to say this, like uh, when you decide to like embark on your journey, whether it's a healing journey, a um, self-care journey, or a journey of saying no, or the journey of just putting yourself first, just remember, um, one is nobody's business unless you're married, right? And um, you don't have to answer to anyone but yourself. So when you're doing this type of journey, it's all about self, self-care, self-love, um, everything to self, putting yourself first. You know, like they always say, you have to put yourself first. I realized in the past, hi, Miss Lynn, hi, Miss Gwen. See, this is why I did this, so I wouldn't have to squinch my eyes. Um, I realized in the past that um, although I started years ago, like putting myself first or taking care of myself, <laughs> But then I would still take care of everybody else. So now the last couple of years, I have stopped. Now it's just putting me first, period, before my children, before ever and anything else. It's me. Then it's my children. Then it's, you know, our needs, necessities, whatever, then wants. It's kind of like the order, you know, God, myself, my children, that kind of thing. Because really and truly, my children aren't... Um, as they say, they're not ours. They're a gift to us, but they're not really ours. They belong to, you know, God and, and the world. They're really not ours. They're just a gift to us for a temporary, for a small time that we're here on this on this planet Earth. Hi, Miss Nicole. We had two Nicoles back to back, Nicole Denise and Nicole M. Hey, MJ. Miss Marlene, Coco Bean. I'm going to try to see... Let me see if I could just click on somebody. Okay. I need to figure out how to, okay, I see it now, how to add moderators. I'm going to have to try to add some moderators if we're going to do this on Sundays. Because I've seen <laughs> some of these lives go a little left. And um, I'm good at ignoring and whatever, but I know other people, it would probably bother other people. So we might have to add a few moderators. Okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I just wanted to chit chat with y'all and see, have any of y'all started your journeys? And if you have, you know, what are you starting with, with your journey? Uh, we have to realize sometimes, um, oh, thank you, the monthly phase. Thank you. We have to realize sometimes um, when we see others, you know, like I told y'all a couple weeks ago, how people are saying, oh, everybody's on this self care journey, da, da, da. I'm, I'm so happy about it because I just feel like we need to be on this. This is the time where we should be. It's a lot going on. And um, you can lose yourself 
in the world of things that's going on. You can lose yourself within the news when you first wake up in the morning, which is always the horrible things that happened the night before. They always hit you hard with what happened the night before, before they bring you some, you know, roses and flowers. They always hit you with the negativity. And so you have to make sure that you're grounded and you're centered and your journey, you're healthy within, right? In order to even absorb some of that. Because some of that is like, whoa. Yeah, I don't watch the news first thing in the morning. I might catch it like um, noon to or maybe afternoon, but I don't watch the news in the morning. I don't watch the news and on my phone, I have all the Amber Alerts blocked because um, that feeling, that anxiety feeling is so stressful. Um, I like to forward them, especially when I see them on Facebook or something like about children missing. I'll forward them, but for the most part in the morning, I try not to like in the morning. I normally log in my phone, see what the weather is going to be for the day, or I kind of know because I kind of check it for the week, and that's about it. But that first thing, morning thing, is a no. But I say this to say, um, we have to be cognizant that everybody has their time and their own journey, right? So that's why I was asking, have you all started your journey, or are you already on your journey, or you feel like you've completed your journey, friend? I don't think we ever really could will complete it. I think we will forever be evolving and um, and learning and growing and all that. So, okay. Dana says she started with rest and creating order in her home. Let me tell you, when you have your home in order, whether it's organized or just order, like plain old order, like um, there's a time for everything. Things flow a little bit better. Anxiety is released. No more stress of what time we're going to do this, when we do this. And I've said this in the past, if y'all have been here for a while, that Monday is Meatless Monday, Tuesday, Taco Tuesday. And it's whatever that looks like for us. Like, it could be tacos, burritos, enchiladas, whatever, right? Wednesday is whatever Wednesday. So normally between Monday and Tuesday, we have some leftovers or something you can make do with, right? Thursday is our breakfast for dinner, whether it's grits, bacon, and eggs for them kids or waffles, pancakes, whatever. They know it's breakfast for dinner on Thursday, um, fish and grits, whatever, right? And then Friday's fun Friday. This last Friday, they had the um, chili cheese Frito pies with like some salad on the side, girl. They, they, my kids like salad, so y'all, yeah, yeah. But um, then the weekend, the week before, I think it was nacho. Oh, it was a taco salad, which is really nachos. But um, that helps us out with order, right? And then they're accustomed to it, so they don't have to ask what we're eating today, right? They already know. And then hopefully as they get older, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll do the same thing. But it helps when you have order in your house. And baby, if you're not resting, then you're no good for yourself or for anyone else. I'm glad you caught the live too. Look, I'm glad I'm on live. Like I said before, um, I was trying to get on here for seven, but for some apparent reason, Google Chrome wouldn't allow me to um, film. So I don't know what was going on. Queen says she's minimizing the extras in her home. I am too. I'm trying. I've stopped with a lot of stuff, like extra, buying like extra things. I buy what I want to buy, about the things I like. And, uh, but necessities come first. Um, I'm not excessively buying right now because I'm about to get my pantry in order and that's going to cost me. Um, at 50, she finally put, she finally, um, uh, for real put me first. Okay. Girl, I don't care if you're 60, right? So at some point we have to stop and say, we have to be first because if we don't, like I said, we can't take care of nobody else. We can't do anything. We can't even, um, it's unhealthy not to, it really is unhealthy not to. Oh, that's a good idea. Nicole says she's walking every day, okay, before the heat kicks in. It's it become a routine. So they say, you know, and I've learned this in psychology, right, that uh, 21 days creates a habit. So if you can just muster through the first five, six days, just to get going, by the time the seventh through the tenth day rolls in, it becomes easier. And then when 21 days hit, it's just a habit. It's a life habit. Um, it's just that easy. It's more of a mental when it comes to us with habits and creating habits. It's mostly mental.
Hey, Miss Karen. I don't know why uh, every time you post, it, it asks me to show or hide your comment, but I showed it. That's another thing. I get a lot of messages saying, I don't see my comment. I don't see my comment. I don't either. I don't either. That's why I have my uh, phone and I'm not the only one. I'm on live with Lulu all the time and she can't see her comments. Sometimes um, YouTube filters them and I don't know if it's because of the emojis or because um, the amount of comments. I just don't know. So... I'm so sorry about that, but I, I'm making sure to click sh uh, show for your comments if it hit. Oh, girl. Okay. She says she started eliminating mom guilt. Oh, I used to have that. So I used to go shopping, for example, and I'm sure a lot of y'all did this too. And this might help somebody. This might help somebody. Listen, I used to go shopping in the store and I would have a basket full of stuff and it will all be for me because it's my day, right? My turn, my time, my birthday, whatever it is, or just for me. And then I would put back half of the stuff and go find stuff for the kids. Like, how can I walk in the house with everything that's for me? Like, that should be okay because it ain't like they don't, they're not taken care of. They have food, clothes, a, a roof, um, and more than most <laughs> children. So uh, that they've never masked for, I've always just given. And so I stopped that mom guilt thing a long time ago. Like at the end of the day, girl, they don't even care what I have. They're going to come take it anyway, but they don't care what I have and whatever. And actually it shows them to take care of yourself, to do for yourself, to buy for yourself. So that they don't have that same mom guilt when they get older of having children and not doing for themselves first and always doing for the kids, right? Putting themselves last. Like if you work hard, um, it's okay to reward yourself. We teach them rewards, right? We teach them when you get straight A's, you know, when you do this, that, and this, clean your room, you might get allowance, you get da-da-da. Well, we don't get one. Like, at the end of the day, we should get one, too. And we should be able to do whatever we want with the allowance that we give ourselves for the achievements, um, working hard, the paycheck, the overpay, you know, whatever it is, right? The extra time work, we, we're allowed to do this for ourselves, and we should not have mom guilt at all. So she says, I don't know where to start. There's so much I need to do. Finances, reset, getting organized, self-care. So I have a circle. I have a circle on a piece of paper, right? And I have a circle, and then there's some lines shooting out for the circle, right? And I only allow myself six, okay? And each six has a square. One is like finances, um, purchase home. One is um, health and wellness. I remember the ones. One is um, like health and wellness, which, you know, fitness and all that is in there. Finances is like paying off credit card debt. Um, home is like everything in, it, that encompasses home, like learning about purchasing a home again, because this will be the second time I buy one. Like researching land, property, what kind of home, like all that and that. And then I have um, the self care part of, um, the self-care journey part, which is, it's a lot in that, in that box, actually. Like, um, holding a space for myself, putting myself first. Um, like you said, not feeling guilty, which I don't have any guilt problems at all when it comes to my, my children. But just, um, I have a lot of self-care things I'm working on, like personal stuff, too. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that another day because that's a lot. But I have the circle. So I realized I have a lot that I want to work on at one time. So I call myself saying, okay, it's Monday. Let's write down what I need to do about this particular thing. And let's mark off this amount of time to focus on this, right? Because you lose yourself or you give up and you quit if you're looking at the whole circle. So just break it in categories and take a piece at a time. It's hard to work on one thing at a time when we have so many going on realistically. So I say to myself, it's Monday. Let's work on researching that land and what we want to do about this house. Like, what can we do today in regards to that? It's Tuesday. Okay, I'm not even thinking about that house right now. We know one day it's going to happen. I kind of got the idea of what I want to do, how I want to do about it. What credit cards are we going to start paying off and how are we going to get these marked off? Like that was how I did mine. And then one was with school. Are you going back? Are you going to get this license? How much is it going to cost to get this license? Are you going to be in debt behind this? So I had to break mine up in sections and then just work, chip away a little bit a little bit. And every time I chipped away, I felt good. Like, oh, I did a little something today about this. Who I did a little something, you know, about this. If I stop and just do it all in one day, oh, I got to do this. 
oh, I got to do this, then I'll quit and I won't do it. So I just have in my phone, it's set up on a calendar and it, it says like, um, a random, I just pick random days. It says, don't forget, submit your, uh, your, your letter for uh, entry to school. Don't forget, like, is that so I can break down days because there's no way I can do it all in one day. And just, I would be overwhelmed because I know it's a lot that I want to work on, but it's, that's my insecurities, my finances. Like it's that kind of thing. Whereas people on the outside is like, girl, why are you stressed about that? That's not even nothing, but it is for me. So I totally understand when you say you don't know where to start. Um, I always say start with the easiest thing because for some pair of reason, our minds, when we achieve one thing, it actually makes us feel like, oh, we can achieve the next thing. So start with the simple thing, the smallest thing, even if say it's a credit card for three, four hundred dollars, try to pay that off. And then what it'll do, it'll trigger to say, oh, I could pay the big one. You know, it's that kind of thing when it comes to our brains. So I'm, I'm trying to scroll back. I'm starting with um, keeping things that I use and reach for. I'm aiming for a breezy, clear space. Yeah, slow process, right? One thing at a time. Like, like I used to say, one drawer at a time, right? One space at a time. Just, you know, I went through and painted my whole little um, area over here. Y'all not going to be able to see because I'm on this computer. Um, but I got rid of some stuff today. Someone put in the video. I don't remember what video that they stopped buying fiction books. And I was like, I really, I noticed my fiction books are on my tablet and my phone and the books I've been picking up are nonfiction or books that are, what is nonfiction? Yeah, or books that I know for sure that I will reread. So that was a really good idea for me. And that cuts down on the amount of books, the clutter or whatever I have. And that makes me be more intentional with the books that I'm buying. Chilling on Sundays and Wednesdays. That's what I'm talking about. Pick out days. And see, she picked two days instead of one day. That's a big stress reliever. Hi, Miss Aunt Cookie. Miss Flora says she's living in chaos. Well, don't say that. Don't say that. Just say you're, you're, you're in between. You're in between getting, you know, getting there. You're not living in chaos. It's a lot going on. The whole world is chaotic right now. So, Let's not say you're living in chaos. Let's just say, you know, you're you're in between. You hadn't started your journey yet, but you will. And um, just pick the one thing that's most important you to start on and then go from there. <laughs> oh, my God. So you're, you're moving in two weeks. And your kids say you leave everything there. Listen, if you can afford to, girl, go ahead and start off, get you some new fresh stuff. I'd be like, okay, who paid it for it? Your kids pay it for it? Who is that? So I remember, Miss Anna Miller, is your kids pay it for it? Because if so, I'd be like, okay, well, what y'all buying first? Okay. I'm in Texas. I went to the basement today. It has to go. Oh, man. The good thing about like, you know, when you have stuff, when you have companies that you can call, most cities and states have companies you can call that will come remove all that stuff, like uh, Purple Heart. Um, I forget the name of these other companies. They send us stuff in the mail all the time here in Texas, but um, they have uh, companies that normally will come and remove stuff for you. Or if you have the funds, you can pay an organizer or a cleaner that comes. If you're like hoarding or anything like that, they'll come knock all that out for you. If the only problem is letting it go. They'll do the work. You just have to let it go. Oh, uh, thank you. I just took a shower, so I don't have nothing on. <laughs> I've been in that sun today. That's why I'm a little drained. Yeah, saying no can be a struggle, but it is cleansing. It feels really good. It feels so light. I'm telling y'all, I mean, when I started saying no, it was like, what? Did I lose 15, 20 pounds? What just happened? I like her page name, Success. Um, start my self-care journey. I started taking care of my skin. Struggling now with fitness. So, you know, so that's another thing. I watched a video not too long ago, and this girl said how she had all these things that she wanted to do, right? And she would notice that she would 
start with one thing. Like this, this is say skincare, and she would get this down pack. She have her routine, but then she would go to like fitness, working out. Then she'll start focusing on fitness, and her skincare will kind of fall off. So we have to learn balance, right? We have to figure out how to balance it all. Unfortunately, us women, if you're a mother, a wife, or anything like that, we have to balance it, it all. Balance it all somehow, some way. You have to figure out how to just squeeze in a little bit of this and a little bit of that. That's why I like those people who are minimalist. I'd be like, man, y'all, we don't have a lot, a lot of clutter, a lot of junk, um, very minimalistic, a few clothes in the closet. Like, it seems like life is so easy for them. I don't know, but it just seems like on camera or on paper and books I've read, it just seems so simple. Yes, indeed. We have to break the cycle because what we do now, our kids mimic us. It's um, It's been studied, you know, it's psychologically known that what you do in front of your kids, they will mimic you and they will do the same exact things. In the uh, of Buffalo, New York. Oh, okay. Yeah, you haven't read a, a nonfiction book in a while. See, I read them to escape. I don't mind reading. Um, oh, nonfiction, nonfiction. Yeah, I love nonfiction. The one that we're doing for our book club for July is um, Viola Davis. And it started off pretty good. The good thing about her book is that it's also an audible book. So when I get in the car to go somewhere to run an errand, I just turn it on. When I'm in a tub and I'm just relaxing in the tub, I turn it on. I try not to turn it on at night, like when I go to get into the bed, because it, it's soothing, actually, the voice. And it'll put me to sleep. But uh, nonfiction books, there's some good ones out there. Let me tell you, there's some good ones out there. Um, I had to do a book uh video one day but there are some good ones out there that would make you be like what yeah you know we see these people who are like you know stars or whatever are in the public eye and sometimes you'll be amazed where they come from you'll be amazed what they've been through to even get where they are it's amazing No, I just got on here, so you didn't miss me. I'm still trying the little part. It's very high of it. it. A lot of blown as opposed to as what? Okay, so well, this might be TMI, girl, but okay. So if if you like, you can read this on the site and all the um, like testimonies is the word I want to say. So if you've been backed up for a while, it's not gonna uh, push you through today. Like it's something that you would take daily that's going to break down everything in there. So if it's a lot of stuff in there that needs to be broken down, it's going to take a little while because it's more of a natural type of product than taking like the green uh, magnesium citrate, right? That right there will move you in like 30, 40 minutes. But then again, that right there is like good for you. <laughs> I mean, we've all used it. I'm just saying, especially if you got to get that dress. We've all tried it. Or if you wasn't feeling well, you just need to move. So what it'll do is it'll um it'll gradually like break that down and move it, and then it'll keep you flowing and it'll keep you on a um a natural regimen of flowing. But sometimes it will bloat in the beginning, and then because it's trying to get everything broken down, okay. But if you ain't going in like a week or something, girl, you go to the doctor, okay. Yes, in the garden is is uh I have a bunch of lemon cucumbers. And peppers, not really tomatoes. The tomatoes I picked, uh, if y'all see me on Instagram, um, I put them all in the window last week and they're all have already turned. So, but they're not turning outside. Once we hit 80, 85 here in Texas, the tomatoes will never, they'll just stay green or they just won't grow. But I'm just keeping my plants healthy and keeping them fertilized so that um, when fall come, I'll still have tomatoes. But right now, with the heat, and my whole garden is covered with a UV cloth. Okay, she said she had three bed sheets, wash and rotate, not buying any more sheets. <laughs> okay, I have two. I have two. I think Penny has two and Tara has two. Crystal has two, too. At one point, they had three. Uh, we just wash and rotate. We wash uh, sheets. Um, well, I kind of wash mine twice a week. because, uh, But um, they wash theirs every uh, Friday. And um, while one is washing, they just switch out the other one. Yeah, we don't have a bunch of that stuff anymore. Have a lot of towels, but 
Hi, Miss uh, Patrice. Yeah, the older you get, the more you do need to minimize. What it does is it helps your family. Like, it's say, like, I mean, at any time, at any, <laughs> all of us go, right? But the older you get, the more you realize it's stuff, it's stuff. And that's just stuff for your family to have to shift through, look through, dig through, donate. Um, a lot of people I know in my era, um, like I have things that I like, that some of the things my kids might like, but I guarantee you my kids don't want my books. <laughs> I guarantee you that they might want my clothes and shoes, but they don't want my books. Um, I know none of my kids want my plants. Like there's certain things I know I have for me, but at the end of the day, um, that's why I don't do China and a bunch of knickknacky stuff because um, at any time, any, I mean, I, I don't, I don't really like a lot of it anyway, but I wouldn't want my kids to have to go through all that. Um, I just have the things I like, and but it's, it's just not a lot. Well, it is. It's perfume. They, they want that. <laughs> Them girls will take that. Something happened to me. Um, getting rid of excess. Yeah, something's in my eye. Getting rid of the excess. I'm trying to, too. Like, all the, I like decor, and, but I just want to kind of like have it a little bit more simple. And I realized, like, even downstairs in our living room, um, I mean, I watch TV in there, and they'll do movie night in there, but everybody watch TV in their room or in that... Um, in Quest room or whatever, right? So no one's even in that room. Like the stuff would just be dusty. My garden is not doing well. So you need to get a UV cloth. Throw a UV cloth on there. Try to knock down at least 15 degrees by getting a UV cloth from Amazon. Um, some of them are 50, 60, 70% sun rays. They'll block them. Try to get, you know, it's the temperature. It's hot. So I'm having water in my garden every morning. We had rain last week, though, so that stopped me from watering for like about a good seven days. I'm so happy. <laughs> okay, so about being intentional. Let me check something else right down here real quick. Okay, so about being intentional. So um, I, I can't really describe how it started for me. Uh, a lot of it is um, being quiet, first of all. Like when I'm around others, I'm very quiet now. I look, I see, I watch, and I listen to everybody. Um, and I notice things now that I have never noticed before. And I noticed that being intentional about like the things I'm eating, the things I'm drinking, the things I'm saying, um, Everything around me is different now. Everything around me is different now. I noticed that um, when I start to think before I speak, right? So I kind of play out what I'm going to say before it comes out. And at one point in my life, it, that didn't, that never happened, <laughs> never. And once you start doing it, it becomes, um, you become used to doing it and it becomes easier. So when I first started doing it, I noticed I was speaking and stop because I kind of had to think about how do I want to say this? And I still say this sometimes. Hmm, how do I want to say this? Because I want to get the um, point across. But I also know with social media and how cruel people can be and how petty people can be, um, people like to um, change your words around and they like to bring up old stuff, right? I mean, my... Everybody has a past. Everybody has history. So I, that doesn't bother me. But I have to be in, really careful what I say. So I started being intentional with what I say to my children, what I say around my children. But everything now is with intention. So say I get up in the morning, um, do a few yoga stretches or meditate for a minute, say in my prayers. Um, I make sure um, when I sit up in bed and I turn to get out and my feet touch the ground, the first thing I say is I'm grateful for this morning. I'm grateful that I woke up today and I get a, I get a chance at a new day. I get a chance to get this right. I get another day. And I pretty much like say that to myself. I'm grateful for the day. I'm grateful I get a chance for a new day. You know, that kind of thing. Then I start my day. So yes, I wash my face, wash my TVs, wash my whatever. But I make sure I take at least five minutes to breathe. 
So whether that looks like me sitting on a toilet, breathing to myself and just closing my eyes or me laying on my back on a mat, closing my eyes. Um, that's why I say I don't watch the news in the morning. I try to make sure like my mind is clear, nothing from the day before or nothing that would trigger anything um, before I even walk out my door in my bedroom. So I started this a couple of years ago and I told y'all, I have a daughter that wakes up and sometimes she's not in a good mood. She's not a morning person. And I noticed in the past, I would be like upset because she always was mad in the morning. But then I had to realize that um, she's not a morning person. She a night person. She like being up all night. So by the time morning come, I'm like, good morning, y'all. Hey, y'all. And I'm crunk, you know, got my coffee. I'm excited. And she like, oh, you loud every morning. And I am. I am every morning. So I get up before they get up, before they get to bickering with each other. Because, you know, girls, they 15 months apart. They like to bicker with each other. It doesn't bother me now. It used to bother me. And I used to go in the middle of it and be like, oh, y'all shouldn't do this. And y'all blah, blah, blah. But then I realized as they got older, they worked it out themselves. Um, so I'm more intentional now in that space. Like what I'm doing, where I am, what I'm saying, and what I allow to come in this space. So like sometimes I get comments on like YouTube. I either block, delete, or just scroll past it. Um, it doesn't even like bother me anymore. Where at first it's like, oh, these people, what is wrong with these people? I it's, it I just don't care. I don't care what's wrong because it's not me. It's out evidently they have an issue and they need help. So I'm more intentional that way too. Like I can go look at comments when I feel like looking at comments, when I'm in a good headspace, when I feel like no matter what I see in the comment section, it's just not going to bother me because I'm in a, in a good space. So whereas in the past, I was pressured because YouTube has seen messages saying, um, make sure you engage, make sure you check in comments. And I feel like, oh my God, if I put a video up, I got to go right back or be there when y'all see it to check comments, blah, blah, blah. And it would be like some negative stuff and it would be... Um, Almost made me feel like, um, girl, I ain't finna do this. Y'all done got on my last nerve. I'm not finna do this. That kind of thing. When I realized it's not y'all, it'll be like this 1% of someone who has either a bad day or that's just their opinion and how they feel or um, they're going through their own little whatever, right? And I had to realize that it's, it's not the collective, right? So now I'm more intentional about checking messages. And I see as I do that, um, yeah, things do fall into place. Everything around me is totally different. Uh, the colors I see, the people I see. I used to be in grocery stores and I wear headphones. If you remember, I used to thrift a lot with headphones. Every once in a while, I still do. But it's one headphone and not both. because, um, And it was because I didn't want to be bothered. For some apparent reason, people gravitate to me in every store I go to. Some, do you like this? What do you think about this? Do you buy this? Have you ever used this? And I used to be like, oh my God, I just want to get in the store and get out. But I don't think I've ever really been able to get in the store and get out. I find myself stopping and talking to people for like hours, y'all. And it's either, oh, what fragrance are you having? Only smell good. Or like I said, have you tried this product before? What do you think about this? Can you help me find this? And, um, I see now that um, I don't know if because I've changed, because I'm more intentional, um, people feel more comfortable talking to me or being around me. And so I just said, OK, you know what? Let me stop being this person. Of, I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to be bothered and be more intentional because I never know who I might meet, who I might see, um, who may need to just talk to someone. We've been locked up for so long that a lot of people have been home alone, right? Alone. Or they were at home with people who they didn't realize they didn't like until they got stuck at home with them. And sometimes people just need an outlet. And I've noticed in the stores a lot that when people stop and talk to me, sometimes it's just to talk to somebody. And um, I, I really don't mind now. At one point, I used to mind, but now... I don't mind. I'm more intentional with paying attention to people and paying attention to people around me, um, their um, 
you can feel people around you. I'm not really describe this, but I can feel like when people are upset, angry, anxiety around me, people are happy in a certain type of mood around me. So I'm more intentional about picking that out. And sometimes that will save you too. So if I know like, like Tara's in a mood today and I can feel her in a mood, well, why am I going to bother her? Like, so I'm more intentional with that now. Like, okay, well, she probably just, you know, let me just let her make it today kind of thing. Um, so being intentional really does help with everything. If When it comes to grocery shopping now, if you notice I don't have a huge grocery haul anymore, I'm back to writing my grocery list. Um, is it one over here? I'm literally back to writing like my grocery list and it's the grocery list and what we're eating for the week and then the household list. I don't go and just buy a bunch of stuff anymore. And yes, the groceries have gone up and the economy sucks right now. Uh, the recession and everything, but it's more about being intentional of like what we're eating, what we're buying. I don't want to waste food. Um, I'm trying to waste food anyway. But the whole intentional thing is more than just self care. <laughs> it's you get you really see things you probably never saw before. I mean, sitting at the red light and not just you know in your own zone doing whatever. When you look around you and see the world around you. You see people around you. I see things totally different now. I try not to ignore people now. And I was big on like ignoring the world. I don't know. I was in my own little bubble. I don't know. I mean, does anybody else feel like that? Like when you're more intentional, everything around you seems to just flow. Um, when I go to the store to get certain things intentionally, I'm not stressed about running out the house to go grab something because it's already there. So that helps the household flow easily. Um, me making my grocery list again, like I used to, and buying the groceries specific to what I'm making makes things easier. Um, getting up in the morning, 45 minutes for my kids to to get everything, um, I don't know, just to center myself and have that time for me intentionally makes the house flow easier because I'm not just hopping out of bed and seeing my kids first thing. And so I'm already in this happy mood and I feel good. And then they feed off of that energy, except for one. I get on her nerves in the morning. <laughs> I know she can hear me. I get on her nerves in the morning because I'm like, hey, girl, hey. And she'd be like, it's five. I know. Let me scroll down. I think I'll scroll back too far. I know I'm rambling and I'm not going to watch this back because I don't like watching myself back after I ramble. Um, oh, it's your first live. Welcome, Shantana. Oh, that's so sweet. That's so nice. Oh, yes. Girl with the louding voice. Yes, I had it on my shelf. I haven't read it yet. I just read the um, the, the jacket. I haven't read it yet. I, I actually watched it live when people talked about the book. And I think I felt like I read it when they uh, talked about it, but I'm going to read it. Um, I saw, just saw something. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I did see something. Okay. From time to time, I wake up in the morning. To, okay. Okay. Uh, depending on how I feel, I know what music. Yes. Okay. So when you're intentional, I'm intentional with music too. Very intentional with music. Because I realize sometimes if I'm in a mood or I'm like melancholy or whatever, certain, certain, so music has feeling. So sometimes it will make you even in a more slump. So I try to put upbeat, lively music that this type of music, finger snapping music, because it makes me feel good. And I love to feel good in the morning with music. And my kids wake up to music every day. Tara's listening to music now. I don't know if y'all can hear. But um, I don't even fuss at my kids if I have a loud music. Unless I'm filming. Other than that, I just feel like music is joy. Music is a way of um, releasing things, right? And it just... Uh, boost your endorphins and it makes you happy and it gives you that good feeling when it's good music and some of some of the music friend ain't, ain't it ain't good not to me some of the music i'd be like oh my god but it ain't worse than what i used to listen to um all right so then she says this is another person says um 
the new service. So you went to Dallas Nutrition and never knew it was that good. It was good. It's good, right? I missed this Saturday because we had things going on yesterday, but I'll be back over there. Girl, I love Dallas Nutrition. That is the best freaking like low calorie, no sugar, almost no fat smoothie in the world. I'm going to try to probably buy some of the products. And I told her that because I want to make them at home. What's a good house plant soil? House plant soil. Anything that says potting soil, potting soil. Um, anything that says organic potting soil. And I know they have it. And I'm going to say it's a pink or yellow bag at Home Depot. Potting soil. But girl, I've seen people use the cheapest, the cheapest soil. The thing is um, making sure uh, you're feeding your plants and not overwatering um, and, or watering enough. Um, thank you, Miss Lottie. Yes, please like the video if y'all do enjoy it. If you don't, I understand. I watch videos and don't like them either, so it's okay. Um, if I can even listen to music, my mood might require me to listen to a good motivational podcast. See, that's another one too. I've listened to a podcast one time, girl, that had me up at night, like, yes, yes. I mean, writing goals, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to listen to others who've been where you've been and struggle to, um, like get on this journey or maybe even search like self-care journeys, like podcasts and just listen to people, how they started from nothing. People sleeping in cars, you know what I'm saying? To opening businesses when others told them not to. And then they're making like millions of dollars an hour. Sometimes you just have to listen to others journey to know like, man, I can do that. Sometimes we think that we are, in a place like way lower than what we really are. And then when you open your eyes and see everything around you, everyone else around you, you realize we all doing the same thing. We're all waking up every day, trying to make this dollar, trying to pay our bills, trying to stay healthy, trying to stay alive, okay? And just trying to make it to the next day. We're pretty much all doing the basic right now. The only thing different, some people have more money than others. Some people have better jobs than others. And I don't even know about the better job part because when I was an accountant for 13 years, I had an amazing job and made a lot of money. I hated every day of my job. I hated every day of my job. I hated my boss. I thought it was the craziest atmosphere ever in life. And I didn't leave the job until I got laid off. How about that? I didn't leave the job until I got laid off. Like I complained about it. I got sick at work. I was stressed. And the only way I left the job was because I got laid off. It's crazy. It's so crazy. So, you know, sometimes we look around, we see everybody doing these self-care journeys. You just don't even know where, where they come from, where they've been, what they've been through to make them say, okay, it's time. It could be health scares, you know, mini strokes. You just never know. You never know. Some people could normally get to their lowest point in order to dig themselves out for journeys like this. A lot of journeys occur because um, we've been through something, you're healing from something, or you're just trying to dig yourself out of something so that you can make better for yourself. And you, you know, when you hit, when you hit that bottom, you know it. You either wake up at night and be like, oh, I gotta change, I gotta do something about this. You get out the tub, out the shower, butt naked, look at yourself, be like, oh. I got to do something about this. You're going to put on that favorite dress, them jeans, whatever. You can't button your bra. I got to do something about this. you will overeat, get sick, not feel good, bloated, can't go to the restroom. I got to do something about this, right? Or you'll, you'll, you'll be on the phone with somebody <laughs> and they'll tell you, oh, you said this before. You're not going to do X, Y, Z. You're like, I got to do something about this. Or you keep meeting the same raggedy dusties as Sheena Collum and you're like, I got to do something about this because if I'm meeting the same type of men or women, whatever you like, um, obviously it's something that is being attracted to you. So you're attracting where you are and who you are at that moment. And a lot of people will say, no, I'm not. And uh, yes, you are. Yes, you are. We've all done it. You've attracted where you are. You've attracted sad. You've attracted confused. You've attracted, uh, y'all know. Because that's where you were. And when you dig yourself out of there and say, I'm better than this. I deserve more than this. And um, what's the word that people use all the time? I don't know. It's, um, I can't think of what, what the saying is. But like, you know, you deserve more. Um, oh, my God. Whatever it is. Um, when you get to that point where you feel like that, you 
ask yourself, what was I thinking? Why was I even fooling with such and such? I was at a low point in my life when I was dating such and such. So we've all been there. Every last one of us. All right. So she says you clean out her closet. Girl, you should see my closet. Like I said, I got a bunch of projects going on right now. I'm Okay. So we're doing Tara Closet first. You'll see that video by... Uh, sometime maybe Wednesday, Thursday. We're doing her closet and her drawers. We're doing Penny's closet and her drawers. Then Crisper, then mine. Because um, around this time, the kids only get two freaking months off of summer. So um, I have to go through their closet because I have to start like now buying clothes for back to school because they go back to school beginning of August. So y'all should see their closets. It's empty. So we'll be thrifting, we'll be shopping at Shein, got to see some hauls coming soon because I have to buy clothes. And so this, uh, this is another form of being intentional, right? Going through everything, touching everything, seeing what they have. Me saying, try that on, try that on, try that bra on. I can wear it, I can try it on, let me see. Because I need to know because I, I don't want them to walk out the house come time school start and they're like well i don't have this and i need this so i'm being intentional this year i'm making sure that when july one hit we went we started going through closets and trash and stuff and donating stuff so that i could be better prepared to get them prepared for school because i i just didn't want to do the last minute thing it's already expensive to buy school supplies so uh, on top of clothes and the kids are growing every year i would say pin and tear maybe grew a size but crisper definitely Grew a bunch of sizes, child. But going through your closet, seeing what you have, and not buying things over, because I've done that about the same thing two, three times, and was like, don't I have something like this? Oh, Miss Emma. Yeah, I try to be positive. Um, I've been, I mean, I get negative sometimes too. I'm human. I'll say a little something. I have to wheel myself back in because I have to realize what I say um, will happen. <laughs> so I have to wheel myself back in and try to, try to block the negative. But unfortunately, I don't care who channel it is. Girl, it could be uh, God himself on YouTube Live and somebody has something to say, Mr. Universe or whatever people believe in, Buddha, whoever. And people be negative and say something. I mean, people just... Um, you know, they're just hurtful. Yeah. Well, the thing about saying no. Okay, so she said between um, deciding to say no and and hear me speak on intentions, right? Um, understand that um, no is good for you. No, and no, no will um, release stress. It helps with anxiety. It'll stop your hair from shedding. Like anything that's causing you anxiety, stress, or whatever, you definitely want to start saying no to. You definitely want to. Because at the end of the day, we all still want to be here to see the next day. So we have to start saying no to something, even if it's small things, baby steps. If it doesn't feel good, just say no. Hey, Miss Marilyn. See? Diane says she's cleaning out her chest, like right now. That's what I'm talking about. Just, you know, look at what you got and do you use it? Are you using it? I got a whole container in the garage right now. And every time I clean that garage out, y'all, that container sits there. When my oldest came the last time you know, during his graduation, I was like, you want these trophies? You want these medals? Do you want any of this stuff? Because I was going to take the heads off of all the trophies and put them in a shadow box. And he was like, oh, well, no, I just want my helmet. But I was like, okay, fine. Because it ain't my stuff. It's his stuff. I was like, well, throw away what you don't want. And now I still got a container with some of their old stuff that I need to put in books. But once again, the stuff I'm like and want, they may not like and want. So I'm asking my kids, do you want this? Do you need this? Some stuff I will keep uh, for when they get older. But now that Garrett's at that age, we're grown now. He don't want it, he don't want it. And I've learned to create memories instead of stuff. So I create memories and then I have a few memories like in a book just in case I lose my memory, right? But at the end of the day, um, I don't want stuff as memories. I'd rather the journey, like us going on trips, um, you know, when we go camping, when we go cruising, when we went to California, I like to create memories 
um, visual memories. And every once in a while, I post something and pop up on YouTube a year or two later. And I'm like, y'all remember this? Or y'all still, y'all remember this? You know, whatever. But we don't have a lot of stuff that's memories. We don't buy a lot of uh, souvenirs. Um, we got a few shot glasses, but we don't have like stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, blankets like from Mexico and all that stuff that people like to buy. We have, I have a basket. I use it for gardening. So I make sure the stuff we get um, has a use or a place. I'm trying my best not to collect stuff or um, a lot of people just have a lot and and they a lot of people feel guilty because it once belonged to someone else. Like I had, I had my dad's bowling balls, right? And I was like, oh, I got to get rid of this. This is sitting in the garage. Well, I found a use for it. It's in the garden. It light up. It's pretty. Okay. Um, one day they might go to Goodwill. I don't know. But for right now, I didn't keep stuff. My sister didn't keep stuff either. I think we had some pictures. And um, I had, uh, he had the same tables I had. So I got some of his chairs so that if something happened to my table or chairs, I had backup chairs. What else was, and we use them at the bar. I don't, I don't have that. Oh, all his like fishing poles, tackling stuff. I gave it to Christopher's dad because they go fishing. I would never. I don't deep, I don't get on deep sea diving boats. Um, I don't do none of that. So we gave all that stuff away. We didn't want anything. We really didn't because my dad created memories with us as in physical memories. <laughs> so we didn't really, he didn't really have stuff to leave us anyway. We didn't want his stuff. I think my, my sister took his refrigerator for her garage, but yeah, stuff. I'm just learning to create um, memories, psychological memories, right? Up here. And then every once in a while we talk about it and we laugh about it and we joke about it. And then we have a few pictures, but as in physical stuff, I don't, I'm just not into it. Right. Yeah, talking to people. Yeah. Um I'm doing so much better with it. Now I just talk to everybody. I hardly ever go to the grocery store and walk out. <laughs> you just get to see how much money you lost. Um, well, the good thing is, you know, what goes, you know, a lot of times when it comes to money, oh, I don't know. I, I, I can't, I can't with that. You sound like my son um, with his stocks and stuff. Um, I just know that one day it'll turn around. I just know things get better. Things get better. And a lot of times our lows are temporary, but we're so busy um being stressed about our lows that um, we don't enjoy our highs. We just really don't take the time. That's why I'm being more intentional about the highs, more grateful about them, even the little wins, because um, I understand that sometimes it, it'll be fails. I understand. And I don't want the stress of the failure. I want to still have the high from the wins. Yeah, see? That's what I'm saying. She said she feels the wind and hear the birds. We sat outside this morning. The girl was so hot. And um, we had two of these like blue birds in the backyard. And we were just sitting there watching them. And I was telling my girls, you know, start paying attention. Start, you know, noticing things. And not just sitting out here kicking and giggling on the phone. Just start, you know, going outside for 10 minutes a day and just sitting and thinking about the week, preparing your mind for the week. Start, you know, whatever. And we were just sitting out there and two birds just came and like flew on our table. When we were sitting there, and we all was looking like, and I was like, they probably want me to uncover that, that tomato plant. <laughs> Girl. Yeah, things flow so much easier when we're uh, intentional. There's a few messages on here. I'm not ignoring y'all. It's just some of them I'm just not answering. I see you. I'm not reading the comments. I know everybody else can read it. I should say that. Yes, music will bring up memories. Music and sense. Music and sense have memories attached to them, most of them. Sometimes you'll walk in the house of a baked apple pie and it'll remind you of kind of thing.
It says she like jazz and old school R&B. I like all music. I really do. Sometimes at night, though, I listen to like jazz at night. It's a blackout channel on YouTube. It's like um, YouTube jazz black screen music. And I sleep to that sometimes. It's just a black screen with music until it goes off. I'm glad you enjoyed the video of Just Say No. So glad. We just have to start doing it. I mean, just it's the first, you know, like three, four no's that is kind of, you know, nerve wracking. Then after that, girl, it's just spill out. Okay, 64 and excited about what's next, girl, because every day, every day we can do something different, learn something different um, every day. She said her chest is a mess. <laughs> Hey, humble lion. Oh, yeah. We, we, that's what I said we was going to talk about, too, establishing boundaries. Because once you do that, you know, then this, uh, that's part of being intentional, right? Saying, okay, this is what I will deal with. This is what I will not deal with. And when you set those boundaries and you're very intentional about it, who you want to talk to, who you allow in your life, who you want to be bothered with, you know, when you're very intentional and set those boundaries, uh, it feels amazing. And and I don't have any guilt for it. It just feels good. I don't even think about it. My phone don't even really ring. Well, it's something going on with my phone anyway. It don't even really ring, uh, but every once in a while, and it feels good. Like, no one's asking me to do stuff. Like, nobody. Um, they still call me with things that's going on in life. They know I'm going to listen, but no one's calling me every day with their stuff. I feel like at one point, everybody was calling me every day, but what was going on with them? And here I am still grieving, going through my own stuff. And I, and one day I was like, oh, y'all can't call me with this. You, gotta, you just got to stop. You got to get your therapist. You got to do something. You can't call me with this. I can't do this. Every day, a friend of mine calls me in the morning, every morning on the way to work. And it would be like, anxiety fit. You won't believe what happened yesterday. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, no, 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 not today. I can't. So then I stopped answering in the morning. And now I answer every once in a while. And now we, we both have an understanding that we're both not putting our negative on each other, but we can call each other when we want advice. We want to talk about, talk things through, but we, we ask each other first, Hey, is this a good time to talk about this with you? Hey, are you free? Can we have drinks? I need somebody to talk to. We do that now. My phone doesn't ring and everybody just go off talking like they used to. I stopped that. I just politely told everybody I couldn't do it. I feel like I was taking on all of their issues, their trauma, and um, I didn't like it. And that only started, I only started noticing that when I started, like, putting me first. I realized, oh, wait, I'm doing some extra stuff I don't need to be doing. She said, I am ironing my clothes from my closet. <laughs> That's what I need to be doing. I had the ironing board right here. I need to do that so bad. But I just said, you know what? I'm not going anywhere. And if I go somewhere, I'll iron as I go. Right now, I'm working on the kids' closet. I have to stop myself from doing too much at one time. So Emma said she really wish she had stopped collecting stuff a long time ago. Now she has massive um, clutter to clear out. But that's okay. Guess what? You don't have to. If you got the coins, let somebody else clear it out. Or make your schedule. What room are you going to do first? And if you got heavy trash, find out your heavy trash thing, get rid of it. And if you have a company in your state or city, let them come get it. Throw it all in one room in the garage. Open the garage and say, here, take this stuff. Like, it's really that simple. The only problem we have is us, ourselves, letting it go. And when you let go of clutter and of stuff, it just feels so good. When you see these people, these declutter videos, and it was like, oh, it feels amazing. I have all this space now. My house is clean and empty and blah, blah, blah. It really does feel good. And I love buying stuff. But now I'm buying stuff like self-care stuff, bath stuff, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't buy a lot of home decor stuff. I, I want some sheets. There's a few things I want, but. I don't just go out there and buy a lot of stuff like I used to, all those hauls.
Okay, so the blender is um hmm, what's that? Cosery. The blender is cosery that I have. Um and did they send it to me or I bought that? I've had that blender for like six years, girl. I think they sent that to me. It's the same similar to dupe of um the other blender, whatever the blender is called. Y'all know what it is. And I thought about getting one, but um that blender has never done me wrong until it breaks. Then I'll get one of the, the more expensive ones. Um, the fridge. The fridge I have is Hisense. H-I-S-E-N-C-E -E through Lowe's. That's the refrigerator they sent me for when I did a collaboration with Lowe's uh, a couple of years ago, three years ago. I have long if I had that. I don't know. My original refrigerator is the Samsung refrigerator. With the double doors, then that drawer in the middle, and then the big drawer at the bottom. It's in the garage. Um, it was originally stocked, like back stock, but the plug in the garage keeps going out. And they kept telling me that my refrigerator pulls too hard and they won't change the breaker. But the refrigerator, if you're talking about the one in the kitchen, it is a high sense from Lowe's. Very inexpensive. I think when I reviewed that refrigerator, it was $1,000, maybe. And I was telling everybody, get this refrigerator, the water spots on the inside. It shows dirty prints, but not regular fingerprints on the door. If your hands are dirty, it shows that, of course. But other than that, I mean, I love my refrigerator. We don't use the ice maker because we have our own ice maker. But um, girl, I love the refrigerator. She's going to the grocery store with one earbud. Me too. I like to listen to music everywhere I go. Or podcasts or like really inspirational like YouTube videos or something. So I kind of like to have something in my ear. And just to keep me going, keep me motivated on being um, a happy, healthy, positive human being. Because the world we live in, um, uh, it's almost like you lying. <laughs> because there... People have been so unhappy and seen so much trauma as youth, as growing up, even as adults, that sometimes people have a really hard time of accepting people of being happy or being like intentional or like, she's not intentional with all that. I am. I'm telling you, I'll be in the store and I'll ask myself, do you need this? What am I going to use this for? Am I going to use this one time? I wonder if I can make this. I swear to God, my son does this now. Garrett called me the other day and was like, I was going to order a pizza, but I was like, I had yeast in the pantry. I could make pizza dough. And he made a pizza. And he was like, man, that pizza was so good. I made my own dough. Da, da, da. And I'm like, yeah. When you stop and start saying like, what am I spending this money on? What am I wasting money on? And my first time being like really intentional um, was when I was getting an espresso machine, right? And one day I was like, oh, I'm not paying $30 for no box of coffee. These people are crazy. And it was 30 coffees, right? So I was like, well, how much is it per thing? I was like, oh, it's like a, a dollar and two pennies per coffee pot. At the time I was paying $2.18, sometimes twice a day at um, Starbucks for a pipe coffee, grande pipe. I didn't get the cream. I got the cream, but no sweeteners because I had sweetener at home. So I on the way to take the kids to school or something, I would pick up one. Later on in the evening, when I had to sit in that carpool line, I knew it was going to fall asleep, I would pick up the second one. So let's just say that's $4.50 a day. Well, that's a day, Monday through Friday. And then that's four days a week. And I was like, oh, oh okay, well, I'll just buy the coffee pods for $30 a month. You're right. And that's one coffee a day. And if I choose to make a second coffee, that's when I had the ground coffee that I put in my like press machine or whatever. And even at that, it's five, six dollars a bag. Right. And that's when I really started being a t intentional, whatever it was years ago when I told y'all, oh, I don't go to Starbucks no more, but once in a blue moon and it's a treat. Um, I don't pay five, six dollars for coffee. And the last time we went, they wanted something with their money. And I was like, well, I just get me a grande pie. And I got a, like a red eye, which is, has a shot in it. Red eye, grande pie with um, toffee nut. And I, I don't know how much it was, but I swear it was like six or seven bucks. I almost died. It was like, might have been six bucks. I was like, oh my God, what is going on? What, what happened to the $3 coffee? And she was like, well, you asked for this. And you, and you told me you wanted two pumps. So I was like, so y'all charging for the extra pump? Okay, never mind. Let me get this coffee and get up out of here. And I realized how much money I was spending on coffee. 
I stopped. I even bought a second machine. So I have one up here and one down there. And I love my machine. It does hot chocolate too. Love my machine. You'll need a life. <laughs> I need to set boundaries with people. Yeah, we all have to set boundaries with people. We didn't grow up setting boundaries with people. You know, we grew up, the first thing they taught you was you need to share. You need to share and get, let your friend have some too. Okay. But you, but they didn't teach you to keep a little bit for yourself first but, and then get, get the rest to someone else. No, they told you share it all, friend. Let everybody get, you know, they didn't teach you that. So unfortunately, we learned this as babies that they would take from us and get it someone else because we had to share. And so as we got older, we take from us and give it to someone else. As we had kids, we take from us and we gave it to them. We never was taught that, you know, leave some for yourself, friend, and whatever overflows, then you give it to someone else. We just always taught to share. And it's never wrong with sharing, but make sure you have some for yourself. We were never taught that. So it's a learned behavior. So as an adult, can you imagine 40, 50 years of not keeping some for yourself and always sharing and giving? It's almost like, can I do this? You can, but it's going to be hard. It's going to be very hard. Okay. Come on, Miss Tanya. She got a daughter. Okay. She said a daughter cleaned the linen closet. Um, and she's currently working on laundry room. That's what I'm talking about. You see, girl, they don't even want to live like that. They don't even want to live with a bunch of stuff. The younger generation are more minimalist. They're more, um, they don't have a lot of stuff. They don't have, I think the, as the generations, um, as the older generations, it was knickknacks. Then it was uh, antiques. Then it was um, pass down your antiques. Then it was um, a generation like they like stuff, but they had their own stuff plus their past like parents or grandparents stuff. At this time around, you'll see more people like on YouTube, on social media, where rooms are clean and they're empty. I remember posting a video. It was my bedroom. And I think it was uh, after it was spring and it was all white with pops of green. And I had so so many people say, where's your stuff? And I was like, well, damn, what's the, and I mean, like, like, where you under, you, under your bed, where's your stuff? Where you keep stuff? And I was like, what's up? My clothes in the closet, underwear and socks and bras in the drawers. And then my cabinets, I have like a book and a pen, right? For brain dumping at night. And then right now it's just fragrances with a book that I brain up. I don't, I don't know what stuff like, um, yeah, I don't know what stuff. I still don't know what stuff because um, when I think of nightstands, I think of like a Bible, a book or something, a pen, maybe somewhere to put your phone and like mints or like, I don't know, maybe you got tummy issues and you got tums in there. I don't know what stuff goes in like nightstands and in your room, like stuff. I, I still don't know what stuff. I've seen videos with like extra decor, but stuff, I, I don't know. I don't, We don't have stuff like that. My kids don't either. Well, Christopher drawers is horrible. He got paper from school and it doesn't bother me though. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes you have to ignore the call. And you know, so really and truly, um, when you have friends and you had a conversation with them, you'll be really surprised at the fact that they probably feel the same way. If you say, girl, yesterday was a day. All my friends will tell you, I say this all the time. Oh, girl, yes, there was a day I just wouldn't answer the phone. I just had to get some stuff together, get my mind in order, and it was no use to putting that on you. Um, when in reality, I knew they was calling me to put it on me. And so when I say it like that, they're like, yeah, girl, I was calling you to tell you X, Y, Z, but you're right. Um, and so now they know, and we have this understanding. I'm going to call you first. Or I'm going to text you. Hey, you busy? You got time to chat? You know, that kind of thing. I just don't call people now and say, girl, let me tell you. Da, 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 da. I don't know what space they in. Girl, they could, they could be at their last wig. I'm not finna put, I'm not finna break the string for them. I'm not. I got, you know, my, my string already thin. I'm not finna break nobody else. So 
we can be kind of understanding. If it's your friend, you should be able to talk to him and tell him, girl, I just couldn't yesterday. I saw you call. Um, I hope everything's okay, but can I call you tomorrow? That kind of thing. Is it an emergency? <laughs> I'm laughing because I'll leave the house to go to the store and my kids are called as soon as I walk out the door. And the first thing I say, is it an emergency? No, ma'am. I was just calling and blah, blah. Okay. But my kids, as soon as I walk the house, they call me and I'm, they'll be like, well, we, I just want to say don't get bread. Or I just want to say da, da, da. And I'm like, okay, fine. But the first thing I say, is it an emergency? Like I just walked out the door. Yeah, people do get offended by the, by you telling them you have a lot going on. They do, but they have a lot going on too. They know this. They just don't have anybody to talk to. They're offended because they a lot of people misery likes company. I don't care who it is, girl. Misery loves company. So you can't be happy, healthy, and whole, and they're falling apart and they're crumbling. You know, misery loves company. That's why I said before, um, people. Some people in my past are no longer there because um, I, I refuse to be miserable or hateful, or always depressed, or always stressed, and always negative about what's not coming. Instead, I just changed my mindset. You know, everything's going to work out just fine. Everything's going to be how it's supposed to be. Um, money's going to flow to me easily. You know, um, my attitude will, will remain positive no matter what's going on around me. I have to think positive because it allows me to think through the things that's going on. If I think negatively, I stay in a slump. So you got to think positive to try to get yourself, you know, going and moving out of whatever slump you're in. You got to keep going. We have to keep going. Ms. Margo said she late to the party. That's okay. Yeah, decluttering is, decluttering is really easy. It really is. You have a box to keep, a box of trash, and a box to give. It's so easy. It really is. Um, when you stop and ask yourself, have I used this the last six months? And not because of based on winter, summer, spring. My, like, literally, have you used this? Like, how many, uh, where do we have those? Uh, we have those lemon press. How many did we need? I think we had like three or four at one time. Now we're down to one. Like, we don't need all that. Yes, coastal small appliances are really good. They have really good customer service. Some break or whatever, girl, you're going to phone them immediately, okay? I love that they have a Facebook and they'll blow up. And I like the Facebook, too, that Coast Re has because they post a bunch of recipes. Um, yeah, so my phone goes on um, Do Not Disturb um, after 9 o'clock. But I also have a second phone and only people know their number is like family. So it would be a mercy if their phone rang. But my phone definitely goes on Do Not Disturb. I don't want no... I have, um, because I have Instagram and I have to um, respond to some of the DMs because I don't, I never know if it's a company. It's, I said this yesterday on Facebook that uh, the DMs on Instagram is a free day nap. Y'all should see some of the stuff to come through there. I wish I would open it up, but Facebook would probably block me or take away my monetization. But the some of the stuff that comes through there is very inappropriate. But, um, yeah, that's, I just put it on do not disturb, do not disturb, because I get a lot of messages late at night. Um, hi Robert. Um, thank you, Faith. Yeah, you know what? I kind of time my time on social media too, because I'm on social media, um, and I try to post daily on Instagram. And I noticed that if I post it, then I start scrolling because you're waiting for it to post. So I'll get to scrolling and I'll be like, okay, I, uh -uh. Like I, I know TikTok, some of that is so hilarious to me. And then uh, that I'll just be scrolling for like hours. So I had to stop. I was like, oh, I'm not going to be on social media all day like this. I'm not going to do this. Even on my kids' phone, they... Um, I can see the hours of time that they on social media. And if you have an Android or iPhone, you can go look up your hours on social media. You might be shocked of how much time, even if you're at work, you know, and just have your phone on. Uh, Y'all, it's a lot. And I get a lot sent to me. Like Christopher thinks everything is funny. And he sends me TikTok videos 
all day long. And I, he said camp, and I go to click on it, and then I get to scrolling and laughing and scrolling, and it'll be like one thing after other after another. So I don't mind the, the funny stuff. Some of the stuff's crazy. And then I get on TikTok and get to watching like smoothies and teas and be like, oh, that looks good. I want to try that. You know, that kind of thing. But I have to limit my social media too. So I try not to be on it a lot. And um, and I cut my TV off at like 9.30 anyway. I'm, I'm out like a lot, like a light. Um, what she's saying? Two days ago, we made um, how special fried rice. Oh, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Instead of ordering it. And guess what? You probably had leftovers, too. And it probably wasn't extra greasy. Because uh, that fried rice be greasy from the restaurant sometime. Girl, you only been at Starbucks once in your life. Lord! <laughs> you must not like coffee, friend. Oh, my God. Don't say that too loud. My kids don't come out the rules. What? They're going to think that's impossible. Your Starbucks was a part of my life at one time. All my birthday gifts were like three, four, five hundred dollars worth of Starbucks cards. I thought you exaggerated. Once, girl, I didn't know that was possible. Oh, yeah, definitely. Miss Candace says, you know, when we first born as girls, right? We are taught to take care of everything and everyone. From baby dolls, feeding dolls, clothing dolls, changing dolls, to sharing our dolls, to, yeah, you're right, everything we were taught to give, 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 give. I don't think we were ever taught to take, <laughs> receive. That's why a lot of us have problems with receiving. I'm one of them. I didn't start um, getting really better at um, when somebody literally would hand me something like this. I'd be like, oh, well, that was nice. You didn't have to. Blah, blah, blah. Now when people hand me stuff, I say, thank you. I appreciate you. But it took a long time. I'm not used to like receiving because I was always taught to give or we've always seen giving. I don't think we've ever um, um, just really learned that receiving is a good thing because I think receiving, you know, is like gold digging or whatever. Back in the day, you can kind of see it as that. Um, but now it's okay. Like, okay, so such bought me something and did okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. And and I don't feel like I'm obligated to return a favor. Now it's thank you. But um in the past, I don't think I I know I wouldn't talk uh about receiving at all. And I'm trying to teach my daughters because I don't want them to feel like gifts is something um, in lieu of. You know what I'm saying? Like a gift is just a gift. It's thank you. I appreciate you and keep it moving. I'm doing so much better at that. Hey, Eagle Lover. So glad you were able to get to the live. I appreciate you. Quest is doing fine, girl. Quest ignores the camera all day, every day. I think I got him on film the other day. Just ignoring me, period. Um, he's really at a uh, teenage stage. He's about like 19 in teenager um, <laughs> years. He has attitude. Girl, mm -mm. I don't know what to say about Quest. Eating up all the food. Yeah, that's another thing. I think, I don't know where that comes from. All of us, um, well, I don't know. Maybe just past traumas. It's, she says, uh, we as women need to smile more. We do. Uh, a lot of women would say, well, well I'm, I'm just going to walk around smiling. Girl, when you're happy, that's why I put a lot of music on, like when I'm, you know, whatever, because it stops me from having that rest and be face. I'll be singing like, you know, mouthing you know, to myself or whatever. When you're in good spirits and you feel good, you, you find yourself not having that stone. We call it the mannequin face. Me and my girlfriends call it the mannequin face. I'll give it to you in a minute, though. If you're throwing something this way that I don't want to receive, you're going to get the mannequin face. I'm going to stare you down like, because, I mean, what what's next? But I'm working on not having that face because it's very standoffish, and we wonder why people don't approach us. Because if we just stand there like, I wouldn't approach me either if I was doing all that. Um, yes, I'm being very intentional about house buying. Um, it, it's a journey. I, I, I guess I'm not as excited because I bought a house before and sold one. So I'm not as excited. 
but I'm very intentional about it because I want to make sure I have the land I need or whatever I'm doing in regards to like my garden. Um, I have some things I want to do. Um, it's just some things I want to do. So I need to be more intentional about it because it can't just be like some random house. I have to do better with choosing what will work best for my family. What Miss Coconut Child? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You got you have to have that conversation, I guess. You have to have a conversation. Let them know that um you're working on a self journey and you're just trying to I don't know. I can't say that. You have probably had to ask a friend that knows more about uh like your relationship. Um uh, gets mad at you when you can't talk. People just, you just have to set the boundary. And unfortunately, in beginning stages of setting boundaries, people feel as we heard. People will have negative things to say. They'll think it's about them. So the best thing I can say is to uh, make sure that they know it's not about them and it's about you. I've told everybody it's not about you, it's about me. It's not about you, it's about me. Now, I've, only, I've said this several times to several people, and I still don't think it has clicked, but it's not for me. That's their, that's their problem. It's not mine. But this journey I'm on is about me. So whether I answer the phone or not, whether I talk to you or not, I mean, if you knock on my door, I'm not answering because I don't do random pop-ups anyway. But um, you have to set the boundary to let people know it's not about them. It's not about them. It's not about them. It's about you and your journey. The only way to get to your journey, through your journey, is um, some is setting that boundary. So. Um, I'm sure you'll come up with a way. I'll think about it. I just can't like say it out loud right now what's in my mind because it might come off wrong. If we was on the phone, I'd definitely say it. <laughs> oh, girl, we get them kind of DMs, girl. They be straight naked. And I'm like, so it's real don't have a filter? Like, I just open, uh, but, okay, so I have general, which is people who follow me and I follow them. And then you have these other ones are people who are either private um, Instagram accounts or um, I don't follow them or they don't follow me. They're just like random people. So I have to click to open it um, to say, yes, I want to let this come through. No, I don't. But I can see the pictures pop up before I say yes, I know. <laughs> Yeah, I've been asked like at least eight or nine times in the last like four days, will you marry me? Yeah, in the last four days. Um, can I send you some money? I'm a sugar daddy from such and such. I like black women. I get the craziest stuff. But I had to open them all because I never know what's in there. Girl, she says she's been to Starbucks about three times. Who are you people? Who are you people? Shy Jim, who are you? Are you real? Is this a robot on my thing? What's going on? Girl, Candace say one time, who are these people? Okay, y'all don't like coffee or tea because that medicine ball tea is good. Um, yeah, Quest is adorable, girl. He's a teenager. I'm way behind. I'm gonna scroll up, y'all. I'm sorry. Yes, Fred. You better get them robes. Let me tell you, my daughter's got robes. They got like several robes. I'm like, yeah, when you get out the tub, you 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 take it all the way. Get out the tub, pat yourself dry, put your lotions and stuff on. Whatever you got smell good, put your robe on. Like I'm teaching them like this, this is okay. I don't know why I, robes and body lotions and whatever became is bougie or for the rich folks. Like, no. It's self-care. It's self-love. It's covering yourself up. It's wearing nightgowns because nightgowns feel good. And you don't want to be restricted with all the mother clothes. It's putting pajamas on that match because you want to. I think uh, for the longest, uh, we grew up with T-shirt and panties. Like, it's okay if you like that type of thing. I love it. And I realize my girls love it, too. So when we see them on sale, we grab them, you know, on clearance or whatever. And they walk around the house with little mattresses, they robes. They got the winter robes, which is the thicker ones. And they got the thinner robes when it's hot. And um, they love it. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but I live where you can pop anything. Pyro, 
anything. You hear me? When it comes to like nine o'clock, which is in a few minutes, I'm going to pop at the hang up. It's going to be so loud. You won't hear me because the back street and then over here by me where this field is, you can pop anything. It's going to be a huge trailer with all these fireworks because they did it last night. I know they're going to do it tonight and tomorrow. It's literally like going to a park to see pyro in front of my house. And I'm not going to be able to hear, I'm not going to even be able to hear myself. Thank you, Miss. Uh, is it Lene? Do y'all hear that? Oh my God. Like, this is crazy. Make you want to duck. You don't know if somebody's shooting. I remember seeing people smiling while driving. I would think it's corny. You get it? So you get it now, right? Like, we're so busy um, thinking negative things, thinking of stressors. You, you don't realize how it changes your face and how you, it shows in your face and you, you know, attitude behind the wheel. You know, relax your shoulders, relax, put on some good music, sing with the music. Like I see people singing in their car and I'd be like, hey, I wave at them. I don't be like, oh, she crazy. I don't do that no more because I guess they probably say, think I'm crazy, but I'm enjoying myself, enjoying life. And like I said, music gets them endorphins going. It makes you happy, makes you feel good. I love it. I have a, um, a playlist just for my car. I love it. <laughs> She'd be carrying on to other conversations. It irritates me, so I hang up so she can't understand why I don't answer when she comes. <laughs> oh my God. That might be your texting friend. You have to just text her. Um, yeah, I can't rush on spending that money either. I did at one point, I didn't I think I just didn't really make coffee at home. You know what I mean? But now I'm like, oh girl, I'll look at that money and be like, oh, uh-uh. Hi, Miss Simply. I had to show your comment. I just said earlier, for some reason, when people put emojis, sometimes it blocked the comments. So you, I didn't block it. That's YouTube, friend. I don't mind sharing my experiences because I just feel like we all got pretty much the same experiences. Some people just don't talk about them. Some people are like embarrassed or, you know, they're shy or they just, you know, some people just keep everything to themselves. But I figure, I figure if we talk about it, let it out, you know, and talk to each other, you know, it helps me to say it out loud. Just like sometimes it helps others to listen to it. Fireworks make your nerves bad. Girl, let me tell you, I got some CBD over here. I'm about to give it to Quest because what he will not do is come lay his big butt on my bed tonight. He's about to have some CBD for night night. But um, yeah, it's fireworks don't really bother me. What bothers me is when it's like 2 a.m. and it's still going on because in my neighborhood, oh my God, it's supposed to be over at 12. But I'm, I'm out in the country. You can do what you want. Like literally, girl, there is like, there's not, they don't pop like firecrackers. They pop pyro. Like all the trucks are by my house that you see sell stuff, they pop pyro. And in like my street at one point when it was like certain neighbors that live here, they've moved now. Every house would donate like $150, $175, 200 And they would get about a good $3,000 and they would put them on the back of this guy's truck, the 18 wheeler bed. And it was, it was time. It go off from nine to twelve, and it was real freaking. And we would wake up in the morning, and you could smell it through your house and everything. But it's right here, like, yeah, right here. So my car is in the garage because I know it's about to go down. Um, I need a class on organizing body care perfume. Okay, okay, yeah, that's fine. I do that. It's not, I ain't got no class, but I'll show you how I order. Well, I already organized mine. Mine's just on the shelf. And mine's just in the um, cabinet. I just put spring fragrances together. I try not to uh, be so anal where a lot of people like to put the uh, fragrance brands together. And that's fine. But um, there's certain fragrances I would not wear in the winter. And then there's some I would wear like in the summer. So you kind of got to, you know, it's best to kind of organize it like that. But I really want a, a, a cabinet system for mine. I don't have one right now. I don't need it. I just want one one day. Girl, let me tell you. I, I, let me tell you. The other day, I was like, oh, you know what? It's a recession, girl. We It's probably going to be a lot of fireworks over here. Last night, my friend called me. And he was like, hey, I'm around the corner. Me and my daughter about to pop some. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. He was like, yeah, over here at the park, it's a bunch of people. I was like, oh, no. Uh-uh. 
And he was like, y'all finna be up tonight. And lo and behold, it was so loud. Yeah. You need to get um, CBD for your pups like for, for like New Year's, 4th of July. Well, oh, here you can pop fireworks anytime. <laughs> These people pop fireworks for birthdays, um, Father's Day, Mother's Day. So we keep CBD. You can buy it off of Amazon. You can get it from your uh, pet, what you call it, um, doctor, what do you call it, the veterinarian. But CBD for dogs is pretty good. You can add it to their water. You can give it to them as a gummy friend so they can go at night. I'm going to take me one myself. That's for adults. <laughs> Because I'm tired and I have got to go to sleep tonight. I'm not going to be knocked out where I won't hear nothing if something crazy happened. But I'm definitely going to get some sleep tonight. People used to ask me why I smile all the time. Now I realize I stopped smiling in the past few years. Yeah, you know what? So guess what? You start smiling, you need to find a reason to smile. You need to find, definitely get therapy. Um, don't let people tell you that black people don't get therapy because we need it. Um, we're the ones who need it most. Black women need therapy more than anybody right now on this planet and um, get you some help. If you can't get a therapist and you're in church, go to your church. You know, if you, you know, try to see if your health insurance covered, do your job, have it on the job. Now they have a lot of companies that are offering um, services because of everything that's going on between COVID and everything else. They're offering services, right? Get you some help so you can get your smile back. Find a reason to smile. Know the reason why you're not smiling. Heal that part of you so you can begin to smile again. That's that's it's really that simple, but you have to put the work in. Even if you're just watching comedy one night and it just makes you laugh, I'm telling you, it feels good. Sometimes I just put up comedy or I'll watch certain shows that I know is funny to me. Um, like Beverly Hills Cop is hilarious to me. Like I watch old, like funny shows sometimes because I know Martin, um, when I'm like kind of like in a rut or something, it just makes me laugh. And I will totally forget about the rut, right? And when you're happy and um, you're laughing, good things happen. When you're sad and depressed, you can only think of bad. You'll never see the good around you. So if you can start there until you can get some help, what makes you smile? Think of that first. Try to figure that out and just work through it. Who do I watch on YouTube? Um, oh, girl, a lot of people. So I don't watch specific, specific people. I watch random channels, like literally random channels of brand new people. Sometimes I feel like the people have been on here for a while. We get like sometimes um, like stuck and it's the same stuff or whatever. So, or it's very commercialized. I feel like I'm watching a movie or a TV or something. So I like really natural, authentic people. I still watch Sharon and her lives. They're hilarious to me. Um, praying for Ron that he gets uh, better and healthy. Um, I still, of course, watch Sheena Sundays. Um, uh, I still watch, um, I don't know everybody's name. It's a lot of people. Maybe I'll do a video on all the people I watch, but I found somebody the other day and she has um, a newer channel, and I love her content. And she did some kind of backyard thing or whatever. I just feel like all these new people are so freaking creative. They just, they come in with it. I was like, yes. So, you know, um, my algorithm is kind of off, right? Because at one point it was like a lot of beauty stuff. Then it was a lot of gardening stuff. So it's kind of what you watch, the, the recommended recommended videos kind of pop up. So I've been watching a lot of like uh, motivational things, uh, manifestation, a lot of um, health and wellness, smoothies, um, plant-based videos. Um, what you need? Oh, okay. Well, I'm almost done. Just wait a few minutes. Um, like health and wellness. Um, and then like backyard, like I guess because I was watching gardening videos, the, the makeovers started coming like with the gardening or uh, landscaping, I should say. Um, I still watch videos with books and I can't think of these people's name. I, I can't. They're just all in my little playlist. Um, so, yeah, I have to pull them up and show you. But I love watching like new content um, creators. It's so refreshing to see like new faces. And um, oh, I love seeing like when... Um, these women do these videos and they just moved into these homes and they're so excited that they bought these homes. It's like house to home like videos. 
I love those. It just feels so good, like encouraging to see others um, doing good, achieving things, big goals, big dreams. We just moved to our dream home. I'd be like, yes. You know, I like seeing stuff like that. It feels good to see others happy. So I like that. Even though that's something I want one day, but it feels like I, obtainable to see others obtain it. I just like seeing people win. Yeah, I always have good creamers. I just buy uh, the non-dairy creamers. I don't really care what the creamer is because so I'm going to add the syrup or I'm going to add cinnamon or something anyway. So um, you can't find Mother Shea. Well, it's all over Amazon because I put the link the other day. Mother Shea is definitely on Amazon. It's cheaper at Target, but they have rose, uh, eucalyptus, um, vanilla, and it's another scent on Amazon. Because my all, all my girlfriends just been ordering from Amazon. They said because it's been off the shelf to Target. Um, she watched the Jeffersons. See what I'm saying? Like just thinking about the Jeffersons and how funny it would just be so funny. Like that's the kind of shows I miss. I told you I'm not a reality TV watcher. Like I like stuff like that, comedy, laughter. Uh, I'm not really into the serious um, drama and. You know, the things that doesn't make us look so great, right? So I like that. Sometimes just that kind of like lifts your spirit. I love it. Um, we feel the need to tell everyone that we what we're doing, mess with, take care of yourself, forget. Yes. Um, that's why it's called self-care. You're right. So, but, you know, when you're older and more mature, you get it. You get it. When you're younger, you still feel like you're um, uh, like you still have to answer to like parents or whoever. When in reality, once you move out the house and you've grown, you answer to yourself first. Like at the end of the day, like you pay your own bills, you take care of yourself. You have to answer to yourself. And um, yeah, we have to do better. We definitely have to do better. Young lady, biz, young lady. Business is a good YouTuber to watch. Young lady, let me just screenshot this. I don't have a paper on here. Okay. All right, thank you. I had to learn the hard way therapy saved me. Yes, that's what I'm saying, right? Because um, therapy is good. It's, so talking to like friends is one thing. If they've never experienced it, or they're not as empathetic, or um, sometimes they don't know what to say because they're too close to the situation. It's okay of venting and letting things out, but a therapist can uh, remove herself from the situation and see the whole circle, the whole everything that's going on in your life. And sometimes when you think that this one particular thing is what's causing depression, stress, anxiety, whatever, they'll say they can decipher like, Mm, well, let's work on this. That's kind of like how they'll tell you. And then you'll realize that this is what's triggering this to become that. So definitely therapy is like, I think everybody should go to therapy once and just unpack. you. Because when you unpack to a stranger that cannot tell your business, cannot repeat what you've said, unless you're going to harm yourself or harm someone else, that's when they can you know, let the authorities know. But they, can, they have to keep your secrets. It's free, okay? Because um, when I was in a class for it, we we were allowed like one th one we were allowed therapy sessions, but um, to see how they work and how they go, and then we became the um, the uh, what do you call it the patient, right? Oh, it was good. It was really good. The lady who was my like mock therapist, she's she's a doctor, a psychiatrist, but she was like, oh, you should write a book. She was like, oh, my God, you should write a book. People, everybody tells me that. Comedy, therapy, and um, all the things would bring, yes, it brings you, whatever brings you joy. I say that all the time. Whatever brings you joy. My first time seeing your channel was during COVID, and you was in your bed having a heartfelt conversation. Yeah. Just, think, just talking about everything that's going on in life. I don't mind. Like, I really don't mind. It's almost like... Um, venting to y'all instead of to my friends, <laughs> you know. <laughs> People who are, listen, I'm laughing at you. I am, but I'm laughing myself. Okay, she said she went down a 
uh, YouTube hole watching people had chipmunks. Girl, Christopher did too. Me and Christopher found this lady, this young girl on uh, TikTok who has that little chipmunk monkey, chipmunk, I guess is what it is, monkey, whatever it is. And um, from there, other people had them. And I was like, oh my God, look how many people had these little gray monkeys. I never knew so many people had them. It's so crazy. But yeah, we went down a rabbit hole too. I think he has, he follows her and sees her all the time. It's the cutest freaking thing because he asked me over and over, can we get a monkey? Can we get a monkey? I've always wanted a monkey since I was a child. We had this place called a tiger bar off of 290 back in the day. And they had tigers, monkeys, snakes and stuff. And I've always wanted a monkey. But you had to live in a rural area and it was quite expensive then. I was younger too, younger though. But uh, I've always wanted a monkey. But a little chipmunk like that. I don't know. I mean, I bought them guinea pigs, y'all. Listen, and we got a dog and guinea pigs died. I, I don't know about a monkey dying. I, I just can't. So Dick's comedy special, Domino Effect. Yes, yeah, that's hilarious. I watched that one. I watched all, all the comedy that's on that uh, Netflix. I didn't care who they were, what they looked like, male, female, whatever. I just started watching them all. Some of them were really funny. Young lady, I'm a, I think I've heard of her before. Glamorous uh, Wildflower. Yeah, I, I follow her. I definitely follow her. Everybody keeps saying young lady. I bet I know who it is. I just don't know the name because they, they're all just saved in my, this pop up. Um, that are also positive. Okay. Let me screenshot. Hold on. Okay. Simply Mia Michelle. Oh, yeah, that's her. Okay, I'm like, I know that name. Any advice for people who wants to try wigs for the first time? Just buy it and try it. Get a headband first because you just slide them on and throw a headband on. It's really that simple. That way you can take it off at the end of the day. And, uh, yeah, and protect your hair. Braid it down, oil your scalp. Keep your hair, shampoo, moisturizer. Just because you wear a wig doesn't mean you, you can't, you shouldn't take care of your own hair. You should always put, prioritize like what's on your head first right and then if you want to toss a wig on toss a wig on but even though my hair is short i still decondition my hair every saturday morning but i like it short and right now it's growing out and i can't wait to get some clippers because my clippers broke so i can shave all this back off i watched rolling with anita i've been watching her for years like five years or so for a long time Baby, Martin and Shanae. Let me tell you, that that right there just has me laughing all the time. I even watched, what was that the other day? We was watching White Girls. What was that uh, the other day? We was laughing because I don't think they ever saw it. And it was hilarious. They was like, oh, my God. They had never seen it. They thought it was so hilarious. Um. Yes, yes. <laughs> Talk about the Bucky. Um. Yeah, I stay looking for, so I have found myself, you know how people watch videos and they will comment something on like videos, right? And um, like negative because something negative was in the video. So I don't comment or anything. I just click out the video. I'm like, oh, that's not for me today. I'm not watching this. You know, I just, I'm very intentional about what I'm watching, but I definitely try to find more positive um videos more inspiring not just a bunch of hauls like i'm not watching a bunch of hauls at all i'd rather see um like just more positive things what's going on what they're working on what they're doing the changes they're making i still like diys i just don't watch a lot of them i definitely nothing dollar tree pops up on my feed at all nothing buying makeup pops up on my feed at all the fragrance channels pop up and I just watch them. I'm at the point now where I can watch fragrance channels all day and not buy nothing. I went the whole month of June without buying anything. This is the first week of July and I still haven't bought anything. I do have something in my basket though. Oh, it's so loud. Georgia Clay is a good you. I don't know that name. I don't think I know that name. I'm a screenshot there. Um... Oh, I watch J-Vlogs. My kids watch J-Vlogs all the time. Oh, yeah, definitely. She's been around for a long time, honey. At home with Nikki, long time. I've been 
girl at home and Nikki. I think I watched one of her first uh, videos ever back in the day. Once you find the videos you like um, and you stay watching those type of videos, the algorithm and YouTube will start suggesting like videos. So, yeah, once you find it, then you'll see. Yeah, nature's good. I like her. Marmo still. I watch Marmo still all the time, every week. I love to see her new stuff. I wish I could have supported her on this last collaboration. Everything was gone anyway. But I love Marmo still. I love seeing young black women do their thing, do their thing. BDK. I have the whole sample set here. I don't have um, Hermetica, but I do have the sample set of BDK. I never just bought the fragrances. They all right. I mean, I like them, um, but like 180 a bottle. But I had a sample set, and I think they were like, are they five meals? I don't know. They were they were the little ones, so I still have a lot left. But I, there are a few that I want from that set that, re that I really like. I think people hype them up a lot, though. But there are a few I want. Oh, you know what? So I realize, um, Shay, that um, the people who watch are supposed to watch. I think I've learned that. So at one point I used to get frustrated. Oh, YouTube going to just my videos. They don't put me out there. I have seen videos. I'd be like, oh my God, this girl got a million of what? And she did what? You know, I see that sometimes I think, but sometimes with all those views and all those followers come extra. And I don't think I have been in a place uh, mentally where I was ready for any of that. Because I noticed when I had several videos, um, I have one video on Instagram that has like 9 million views. I have one video that's like a million something views and a bunch of 500,000 views of videos on Instagram. It is so overwhelming. It's very overwhelming. One, everybody knows you now. Everybody's seeing you. Everywhere I go, I see somebody. Hey, are you hailing from YouTube? Are you hailing from Instagram? Everywhere. I think at one point in life, I wasn't in a place. Like I told you, the mean mugging, the rest and be face, the earphones. I, was, I wasn't in a place to even receive any of that. And then once I started being intentional, being open, being more freeing with myself, um, and knowing that um, it's okay to stop and speak to people, it's okay to be happy and to smile. I think that's when things started popping off, especially on, on Instagram, right? And um, because of that, I'm more open to it now. I think at one point I would have shut down like, oh, there's too many people, there's too many questions. Oh, they all in my business, you know, because I feel like Instagram was just coming at me, message, message, DM, DM, message, because every time them videos go up, people got questions. It's like, I put the information in the description. Y'all didn't read it. You know, so now I'm, I'm more receiving. I'm more at, I'm at a place now where whoever watches, watches, right? Whether it's a lot or little, it's okay. It's It really is okay. It's a reason for everything. And I never want to rush God's process. He knew I wasn't ready for a lot of it. Like, like a couple years ago, had I been like this big, huge channel with all of this I don't know. I don't think I was. I wasn't ready for that. But it's all good. I, I love and I'm so grateful for the people who do watch me, who comment the same people over and over, who come over and Instagram and hang out with me, who when I'm on another channel and they see me there, they speak to me. I, it feels like home. It feels like family, right? And sometimes you want family and not strangers. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you need family and not strangers. And it feels good. Even though you're strangers, you're family. What is Dirt Cheap? Dirt Cheap is a place that has, um, oh, here my back is still hurting, that has um, items, of uh, discontinued items from like Home Depot, Target, and places like that. So I haven't been to Dirt Cheap in a while, but uh, I went by the other day, like passing through this area, and it was packed. Um, Very packed. Is it Target? What else I was going to say? Target. I got to get up off here. Get my back hurt. Target. Is it Target? Is it Target? I know it's Amazon. Certain stores now are, girl, it's so much going on in the world. Certain stores now are saying you don't even have to return products. They just give you money back. Isn't that crazy? But Dirt Cheap is so full. I don't think they even, I don't think they're accepting things because, you know, the trucks are so late and so slow. There's a trickle down effect, right? COVID. To the, to the trucks, 
in containers in the water and products aren't being put on the shelf. And then when it hit the shelf, it's past the season um, to where now Dirt Cheap is packed, like packed. Like, so I would have to go in there intentionally. So we go to Dirt Cheap for back to school. So we'll be there for clothes for back to school. We went there at one point for like outdoor stuff. But actually just going in there just because I'm not going there just because it's too much stuff in that store. You can't even, uh, a friend of mine said she went and the clothes were so tight. You can't even like move the clothes to even see the clothes. And I was like, oh, no. Tiff's family vibes. Uh, she sounds pretty familiar. I don't know who that is, but she sounds very familiar. Let me screenshot that too. Um, okay, she said she brought the channels down. Um, what she say? Yeah, the only thing about dirt cheap when it comes to like certain things, you have to make sure all the pieces in the box or whatever, but they always have a table sitting out where you can dig through everything. Dirt cheap is where most of my rugs come from, my Safavea rugs, um, stuff like that, where rugs would normally be five and six hundred dollars, like those big rugs. I was paying like 50, 40, 30 dollars. You know, um, dirt cheap would have all the products that's discontinued from um Target or Overstock or you know how companies rebrand themselves. So you know how the bottle might look a certain way. And then a couple of months later, a company rebrand themselves and their bottles look different now, like Shea Moisture. Well, then the old bottles will be on the shelf at Dirt Cheap. Now they don't expire for two, three years, but because the packaging label or something has changed, um, they just continue to take them off the shelves. And so they box them up and it goes to Dirt Cheap. A lot of online furniture stuff from um, Home Depot goes there too. I think I watch Lady Business. That's crazy. That I can't think if that's her name or not. This is somebody I'm thinking in my head right now. You're 49, girl. I'm 48, friend. Knock it on 49. They closed down the dirt cheap by you. So I, I, I know it's one like that's not by me, girl's far. But now we have that $10 store. I was telling y'all about it. It's not a $10 store. I say it's $10 store because they had $10 dresses. It's called something else. I can't think of it right now. But um, I'm definitely going to take y'all when we go do all this back to school stuff. Yes, David Arnold has a special too. I watched that one. Annie and Katie, Dirt Cheap. I don't know. Google Dirt Cheap, girl, because they, they everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> it's a lot of them. We just put up this DD discount. Yeah. Yeah, it's like quick and cheap stuff. So I don't buy quick and cheap stuff no more because I need it to last. Uh, no more quick and cheap stuff. And this is for the kids that I know they're going to kind of like outgrow it. I've been trying not to do quick and cheap. If you notice, I haven't really been buying, been buying Ross dresses. I haven't been buying nothing, really. But I've been trying to be a little bit more intentional. I don't mind thrifting because it's a few dollars or whatever. But I'm just trying to do a little bit better. Walmart had me my money back on a small freezer that I bought around Christmas and said, I see. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. A lot of stores don't have room for back stock, um, for storage. And then they, they're not having places to take the items that um, it, it costs them more to take the product back, store it, resell it, or trash it than it, it is just to give you another one until you do whatever with the other one. Yeah, a lot of stores are doing it. I want to say Walmart, Target, Amazon for sure. I bought a couple of things from Amazon. I'm like, oh, this is garbage. I don't know what. They're like, oh, where we find your money in 24 hours? And bling, the money's there. And they're like, we'll send you another one or whatever. Or keep the product. Yeah. Yes, going to dirt cheap raised my anxiety too, friend. That's why I had to go in there just like thrifting. I had to go for a reason. I told you I don't go thrifting and, and go down every aisle like I used to. Thrifting is like, oh, we're going for blazers today. We're going for jeans today. We're going for. I'm not going. Uh, it's too much. Simply Yasina is a good. Simply Yasina. That sounds familiar too. Why is my computer doing this? Ugh. I'm trying to get a new camera too. I'm actually going to take a class on the camera I have. Oh, so that's not going to work. Um, uh, just discovered um, that video touched on how we need to. Yeah, we definitely need to separate each other. 
If we don't do anything else in life, y'all, we have to support each other and have each other's back. Even if, if it's just, if you cannot support someone because you're not mentally in the place to, right? You're supporting someone and saying, hey, um, you should try therapy. You know, we just have to do better. We just have to do better. Us, us women have to do better, y'all. We are living men, okay? We are numbering men. We, we have to do better. We have to take care of ourselves. And then we'll start over. We help each other out with, right? We have to. Okay, I know who that is. Okay, yeah, okay. So that's the one is redoing the older house. I know exactly what it is. Okay. I have found out the method to maneuver through dirt. <laughs> girl, well, good good for you, friend. Because I, I go, girl, I'm telling you, I can only go for certain things. My, our dirt cheap is bigger than a Walmart. Girl, the replay is going to be long. I'm sorry, y'all, but I'm going to get up off of here. I don't even know how long I've been on here. Oh, my God, two hours. I told that girl I was going to be here 40 minutes. Everything was a dollar. Do you see what I'm saying? Is it, uh, oh, I'm stuck. Oh, this is stupid. Oh my God. Okay, I was stuck. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't know the internet was going on. Um yeah, the, this live is about two hours, so I'm gonna hang up. But um if anybody does watch the <laughs> replay, good good luck. <laughs> this is a rambling mess. <laughs> um Okay. She said she'd like to send me samples. That's fine. You can just email me. Uh, my emails are most of my... Um, this is h2naturalbeauty at gmail. I don't mind. Yeah, so all that summer stuff you saw, those furniture stuff, they go to dirt cheap. So they'll be a dirt cheap for like 65, 70% off the original price, right? So like the furniture I have outside, that two seating set thing that was like four, five hundred dollars at Target, that I paid like forty dollars a piece. Yeah. Like, and I still have that like six, seven years later. I still have it six years later. Um yeah, I download the app too. I have the app too. Uh, thanks for the live. Yeah, I'm gonna go because uh, Tara says she wants to bathe. I'm just gonna say thank you for watching. And I, I, I didn't eat dinner, I did. I'm gonna go eat because I'm going to sleep tonight, friend. Somehow, some way, I'm about me and, and Chris about to get these uh, this CBD because <laughs> girl, they about to be it's about to be on and popping. But um, thank y'all, I appreciate y'all hanging out with me. I hope that somebody got something from this live, you know, and just a word of encouragement from each other that girl, we all struggling, <laughs> we all have been there or going to be there, or you know. It's just a journey. There's no like handbook for this. There's no book. There's no you know textbook that says do this first and do this. But what we do know is that we have options. We don't have to walk around not smiling. We can actually smile. We have a choice. Every day you wake up, like I said, first thing I say, I'm so grateful for today. I'm so grateful for this new day, a new chance, a new day. Because we we have options and we have chances at doing whatever we want to do. It, most of it's just us getting it in our own way. We get in our own way and we have to stop. And you, when you let go of what other people think or feel about you and your journey, girl, that intention would just be amazing. You're, I'm saying I see the world totally different now. Totally different. Everything is so much clearer. Like I just see through people now like, mm, I don't want to deal with that today. And then I don't. And I don't feel guilty for not doing it. It's just really that simple. So thank y'all for watching. I'll see y'all on the next one. We got to finish Tara's closet. Ooh, I feel bad because we got to go buy so many clothes. But they just growing, girl. They growing. They growing. I'm out. Peace, y'all.